I wanted to win. This race for me is, is different. That race was probably the most I've wanted to win in as long as I can remember. This round should be interesting. There are always gonna be things that you wish were different. I wanna go as fast as possible. In that one situation, I do feel like I have something to prove. So TX2K is a, a long running community gathering because there's a lot of hot rods in Texas. So you have the Corvette guys and the Super guys and the Porsche guys and you know there's a lot of money in the area. So it was a street racing uh, event that turned into um, maybe a dyno competition. And then in the last few years, um, it's turned into a sanctioned uh, drag race at uh, Houston Raceway Park. Over the years, it transitioned into me not street racing and only doing the event because now the event has everything anybody would need, both the roll racing and the drag racing. And you'll see, you know, there was uh, a guy there with a McLaren, there's Lamborghinis, there's Porsches, there's Mustangs, there's Supras, there's Evos. The majority of platforms are well represented there if it can be made fast. So there was an eight second stick shift Subaru there. like you know, a good, a good variety of uh, different cars. The first time Gio went out there, it was a car with, that I had built and tuned, and he um, mainly just did street racing. That was the year that he had that video. They were a chase car, and he was driving up into that twin turbo Ford GT. And then the next year, I went with him, and we roll raced his Silver Supra, a different car that had a TH400. And that was the year that we, um, had raced the Lamborghini and won, which was really a wild time for me because they were having a hard time getting a fair start. And we, had, we kept having to run the car over and over again. So I was concerned about transmission temps and oil temps and engine longevity, and this thing just, just took it like a champ. And then we started to build on this car, and we went out there and we won the, um, the 2JZ class with this car when it was still a, a stock block. And, um, and then this year we have uh, the billet block, which was nice because now I have um, a bit more confidence to um, keep adding power to it to keep going faster and faster. So this year for Texas, uh, we brought two Supras. We brought my white 1995 Supra and uh, Jared's 97 green Supra. There were two classes that we could compete in, the 2JZ class and the streetcar class. Uh, Jared wanted to compete in the streetcar class. I mean, his car makes more sense for that. Uh, while my car uh, was eligible for that class, I went to Texas to race with the faster guys and the faster guys were all gonna be in the 2JZ class. The 2JZ class is full of um, basically the veterans, you know, you have uh, Dana from Virtual Works and Cody Phillips, um, the Titan car is there, Tony Phillips is there, you know, p people that have been in it, you know, the guys from PHR are there, they're, they're the, they're the kind of the cream of the crop of uh, super drag racing and they're all represented in that class. It's a lot of low seven second cars. So the difference between those cars and this car is this car is meant to be driven on the street. While it's not going to be a daily driver, it has to function on the street. So it does have a billet engine now that runs water, um, and we run ethanol for fuel. We still run an air-to-air -air intercooler. When you have the air-to-air -air and a full-size radiator, that puts your turbocharger in kind of a standard super location. So that 75 or 80 pounds is up high, level with the cylinder head instead of down low out in the nose to help keep a wheelie in control. Um, same thing with the intercooler, radiator. A lot of those concessions that m make you able to compete in drag week make it harder to drag race at this level. There are m multiple cars there that could definitely outrun this car once they're all set up. There are other cars that I felt confident against, but at the end of the day, they're all very fast cars with 
people that are very experienced, so any of them could do very well. This year, I was definitely more prepared to go. So, uh, Gio was out of town the week before. Yeah, Jay wasn't uh, thrilled about my planning there. Normally, the week before TX2K, we're always testing, making sure the car is ready, and I actually booked my honeymoon during that time. So I took the car to the track and ran it, and it um, it went a 697. It was <clears throat> it was fast as 60. It went 109 to 60, and I felt like it was as good as it was going to be. So the, the days leading up to the event, I think the only change I made was um, a couple things to transmission pressure. There are always going to be things that you wish were different. You know, there are always things that you you wish um, you could have it done because the, these cars are a work in progress. So, yeah, it was it was nice to go not um, not having thrashed. You know, I took the weekend off and just spent it with my family the weekend before Texas. That's new for me. Before it's always working right up to the wire. So it was nice meeting Jared in Texas to race his car was pretty exciting because I, I know that he hadn't seen it in a while. You could tell he was ready, like he was happy, but he was looking at the time, just when are we going? When are we racing? When are we gonna do this thing? I think Jared's the kind of guy that, if you gave him the choice between a new Ferrari or 20 really cool cars, he would take the 20 really cool cars. On Thursday when we arrived, uh, the event ran a little late. There was some rain delays and they had to cancel the drag racing uh, test and tune. I didn't really feel the need to do a testing run because we had just run the car in Orlando the week before. So we were just gonna make that exact run, go A to B, and make sure that everything was working fine. I know that um, having Jason Miller run the track, having Jason Miller prep the surface, that I don't have to worry about having the tire come loose. I mean, that's, that's a huge advantage to be at a drag race and you just don't have to worry about the tire spinning. something that we didn't expect and it, you know especially getting back in the car after all those months uh, every single time you get in a car like this it, you know especially after spending some time away from it the car kind of freaks you out a little bit you know it's, you're, you know what's about to happen you the anticipation kind of it, 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 it gets you nervous So once I make a hit, everything goes away because I'm, I'm used to it again. But that first one is always a little bit uh, nerve wracking. And, you know, to do a wheelie immediately, that, that'll, I don't know, it, it just, I wasn't expecting it. With the 30 pounds less of engine weight on the nose of the car and the, um, the air or weather in Texas was better, the car was making more power. So I was going to, I had to, um, remove ignition timing as the car left the starting line um, to get it to stop wheeling. I mean, I just hope that there's no <laughs> there's no oil, you know. Luckily, we've, I had already done it once, so this time I was a little bit more prepared. In October, when I did it the first time, I let it go all the way up, and if I didn't have that tow hitch, it was going to be on the bumper. Uh, this time I caught it on its way up, but it still made for a very good picture. I mean, at that point, the pass is ruined. I wasn't going to try to, if we were in competition, I would try to pedal it, keep going, but at the point that I'm qualifying, I just kind of, let's wait for Q2. Butyl lane's four and five, GTR four to lane, butyl lane three, and GTR limited, butyl lane number two. Jared's never, never felt afraid. Like, he never seemed afraid. Like, it had been over a year since he raced the car, and he, w he didn't seem nervous at all. And if he was, he definitely 
it, it didn't show it. Jay didn't give it all the power and you know you can tell that when he saw a time slip, it went a seven, he's happy, but he's ready like, okay, turn this up, I'm ready. It came right back to me. Um, you know, all the things you have to do with the car, the burnout limiter, the nitrous, the boost settings, the trans brake, the bump box, things like that. Um, it just came back. It's like kind of like riding a bicycle. So uh, we went 790 that first pass and uh, felt great. We came back and, you know, obviously Jay, you know, asked me some questions about the car, what I felt. And I was like, man, it felt great. But obviously, you know, <laughs> this is our drug, you know, we want more. We want to go faster. You want, you want to go as fast as you can. Going into qualifier two, um, I had reduced uh, the the power the car was going to make at the starting line. So I line up for Q2, I do the burnout, everything appears to be okay. I go to stage the car and it's hitting some sort of a cut. I didn't know what the cut was at the time. And then when I heard it the second time, Gio was gonna to try to make a run. And by then I had looked into the window and looked at the, the MoTeC display and seen the boost level. And I, I knew what the cut was. And I knew, you know, when I, he, he, he let go of the button as the, as the dash display went past 33 pounds. So I was like, you know, hopefully it will come loose. I give a lot of props to the people that can, you know, pedal it and keep going. Um, I, I don't like that feeling. I mean, the car is looking straight up. You know, I have no idea how high it is because once it starts to come up, you have to, you have to get off the throttle very fast, but it's still going to have some momentum. It's still going to go up. Uh, so you just have to try to make sure it doesn't get on the bumper. But this car, I, you know, when it goes up, I don't know that I could pedal it and keep the nose down. That to me was um, a blessing and a curse because now I know that um, there's there's traction to be had to go faster than we've gone before if I can just get this wheelie under control. I thought that we had taken power out of it, so I didn't understand what was happening. After I, we came back around, Jay said it turned out to be a problem with the boost control solenoid. And it wasn't putting air to the bottom of the wastegate to lower the boost pressure, so it left the starting line. 15, 16 pounds above what it should have. Luckily, the guys from ETS uh, supplied us with a boost control solenoid so we could continue on to round three. It is quite a bit of a departure from the problems that I experienced at Drag Week in terms of traction. Because, and I don't think Drag Week should change. They, you're showing up to a racetrack, and you're out of, you're a fish out of water, you know, and you have to try to balance power and traction the best you can, and I struggled with it. Whereas showing up to Texas, you know, uh, Peter advertises, Jason's going to be there. Track prep's going to be perfect. Bring everything you can, you know. So you go there with the intentions of, you know, going fast and not having to worry about um, backing off the power. I mean, there were, some, there were some stick shift cars that they couldn't get off the starting line because there was so much traction. They needed wheel speed and they weren't getting wheel speed because the surface was so good. Yeah, I hope we go faster than we did yesterday. Jay put it on the lowest oh, boost setting oh. yesterday. We went at 90, 790. So it's the first time back in the car in over a year. So uh, knowing Jay, you probably put a little more sauce in the car. So man, if we can go a 60 or a 70 this pass, um, I think we'll be okay. When Jerry got uh, to his car for the first time seeing it, I see that he's walking up with a little R2-D2. His daughter asked him to take 
the R2D2 for a ride in the car. So Jared strapped in R2D2 in the passenger seat, put the seatbelt on it, had a GoPro pointed at him. So R2D2 was making seven second passes all weekend long. So his daughter was pretty excited about that when she watched the video. So for qualifying two, I'm sure he put a little more in it. Um, but the, we spun the tires in the one-two shift, probably due to me over the motor a little bit. But we did spin the tires, and um, that was it. You know, going into Q3, I still haven't made a run. However, we found we found a problem. There was no guesswork happening. We found uh, a problem. We fixed it. So at this point, I feel pretty confident that everything's going to go okay. <laughs> I had lowered the ignition timing over the first second of the run. I had lowered the boost aim just a little bit, um, and I had made some suspension changes. I I was uh, you know I was nervous because I was watching um, the Titan guys struggle too. So I thought, well, one of us is going to get this together sooner than later. Knocks it out of the park, 111 to 60 feet. As soon as Gio ran the car and it put down a good number, you know, I think that both of us were, um, were certainly celebrating. Yeah, buddy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you want a high five or a hug? Uh, whoa! Oh man. <laughs> oh, man, that feels so good. Dude, it was November the last time I did that. And it was exactly a 691, and I just did exactly a 691 again. So now, now I just gotta get a... Get Jason beers and see if I'll turn it up. <laughs> I made the decision not to race qualifier four. We didn't have a full field, so somebody was going to get a buy. So I hope we go some rounds tomorrow. I think we're done for today. Yeah. We don't need to keep running. Yeah. That was still number one qualifier after four rounds of qualifying, even though you know two of the passes were wheelies and we didn't have Q4. Uh, we did good enough in Q3 that we went straight to the top. <laughs> that we have a car that um, could possibly win the event. 
and 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 I was again trying to be under the mindset of being there to win versus being there to um, to just go to one of the coolest you know car events of the year. And we went into eliminations round one at the top of the ladder, which meant that we got a buy run first round. There was two ways we could go. We we stayed in the back. And we kind of watched how everything played out. Dana had a race, the Titan car. And we were going to wait to see what happened with that. If Dana won, then we already have a pretty good tune-up in the car that we know will go 6-9. It'll make for a competitive race uh, with Dana's car. Um, however, if Titan won, then you know we know that that car can be very, very fast. I mean, it's got you know it's got a setup that should run mid sixes when it's all sorted. So at that point, we had to decide if we were going to gamble. If Titan uh, beats Dana, I'm going to wish that we had ran the number now. If it ends up being that we're going to have to run the copper car, I want you to give it everything it has. Jay put enough power in the car that if the nose stayed down, it was going to go very fast. So we chose to use round one eliminations as a test pass uh, because we had a Byron and we could gamble. So we knew we had to back it down and find a happy medium between too much and trying to go a little bit faster uh, just to see whatever advantage we could have towards the Titan car, which we know could run our number. It was better. The car goes out. It's carrying the nose. Um, but about nine tenths out, it starts to rotate. So it, right there, it just needed some more ignition timing out of it, and it would have it would have been fine. Now we have the power and the engine block to go you know, six, eight, six, seven, six, six to keep progressing with this car. So um, I have to learn how to manage the wheelie better without being able to shift a lot of weight around in the vehicle because of the streetcar uh, events. <laughs> if we hadn't done that pass, if we hadn't, if we had just done a by run and just gone slow, the the chances that we were taking could have worked completely against us and we could have done a wheelie against the Titan car and race would have been done at that point. I just went back to where I was before as far as starting line stuff and we were going to use that to compete with. So Jared's a very competitive guy. At the end of the day, he wants to win. You know, he he likes getting new personal bests. He likes all that stuff, but more than anything, he likes to win. So he, he went there with the intention of, of winning in the streetcar class. One of the lone imports in this class, Jared Holt, real street performance built Supra. Nothing like that. There's yeah. really not. Like, you can do jump out of a plane or you can do whatever you want, but there's no feeling like pulling the wheels, coming down, doing it again, and oh! For him to do that with, you know, without any kind of, uh, like, Jay didn't talk to him about it and say, hey, if it pedals, you got to do this. There was no instruction. It just happened, and he just naturally knew exactly what to do, and it worked. And he was fearless, and it paid off, and it was incredible. I mean, he's a he's a natural driver. This round should be interesting. 
this race for me is is different. It's not just another round, uh, just because Gary and that car are, are people that I've, you know, I've been around them for a long time. Like I, I, I've seen that car when it was six speed and it went nine. So I saw it go eight, I go, saw it go seven, and now I saw it go six. So I've seen this car as a fan of Supra, you know, well over probably 15 years, I've been a fan of that car and Gary has driven it most of the time. It was a big deal. You know, it was a, it was a challenge. I, I, I wanted to win, but I respect them a lot. So at the same time, it's like, wow, I'm going to go up against Gary White. I was a little nervous that, uh, that Gio was going to, um, spin himself out, you know, because it is a lot of pressure. Um, and I, I wanted to win because I, that, 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 that race was probably the most I've wanted to win in as long as I can remember because, um, because in that one situation, I do feel like I have something to prove. You know, I, um, I've worked hard. I've learned a lot. I've been, I've been careful with engine stuff, you know, and here is an opportunity to go against, um, you know, a very experienced team of guys that have gone very fast with two Jay-Z platforms. Going into this race, I really didn't feel nervous. I was more excited than anything. I was ready to get it done. Like I did the burnout, I'm just ready to go. Like I, I was ready. You know, Gio did his burnout and the track's all there. You know, there's not, you're not having to work around some bald spot or something. The track's ready to take what you're gonna put into it. He was maybe 10, 15 feet from me and I looked in the car and I looked in his eyes and he was hungry. I mean, he was not, he was not stirred. He was incredibly focused. And at that point I thought, we're gonna have ourselves a race. I turned on the first beam and I let him go and I was ready to stay there all day. I was worried I would go red because I was that excited, but I, I, I needed to cut a light. Like, the, you, you have to cut a light against that car. Once the tree came down and Gio went out on him, I thought, he's not gonna catch him. I knew that I got out of home, for sure. At that point, you, you know, uh, I couldn't really see and I couldn't really hear. So I know that he's not quite next to me, but then as we went down the track, I, could, I was hearing something happening. And just right before we hit the, the tree, like I could feel him and I started to pull a parachute and he just flew right by me. So I knew it was extremely close. Like when we got to the end of the track, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm excited, but I'm talking to Gary. I'm like, I don't know what happened. Do you know what happened? He's like, I don't know, man. It's gonna be very, very close. So neither one of us at the time knew what was happening and nobody's coming up to us. So we're just like, Okay, so at that point I just put the parachute back in the car and try to go get the slip to figure out what's going on. No, neither one of us knew what happened. You know, I didn't know if I red light and you know, I didn't know if he passed me at the end, right on time, I, I, I didn't know. Gary was still waiting, waiting for his team to come get him. Um, so I went up, I, I wasn't gonna wait for him. I was too <laughs> anxious to figure it out. So I got in the car and went to get the slip.
takes the quickest DT and fastest mile per hour ever by Supra at TX2K. Holy but Geo takes the win. Holy in the right God lane. win for Geo. Oh, man. Bro, congratulations. What the f***, bro? We didn't know. I, we were at the end. I'm like, oh, man, I think you came around me. I don't know, but that was a hell of a race. What a f race, my man. I treat you my Nice to have him. That's awesome. I love it. What is the light? Treat him, my man. 147. 147. Man, I knew I got out of him, but I was sure he came around. What were you thinking going into that race, bro? It's a big race. It's man. a big car. It's a big race, and that's a iconic car. Iconic car, iconic For driver. Everyone. Like I said, everyone that has a Supra loves that car, including me. So uh, that was pretty awesome. That's big. That made my weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that is. That's a moment that I'll remember forever. Just again, it's it's that car. I know that that car. We're definitely gonna race again, probably multiple times, and I may not always win. But the first time that we race, I won. You know, I, I beat Gary White. That I beat that car. I beat the copper car. Like that was a big deal. So I'm, I was screaming. I was. It was incredible. When he went up against the Dotson, uh, if you were looking strictly at the numbers, uh, you could get confident because, you know, in theory, the car should win. However, when you look at the car, you know, it's a light car. It had a wheelie bar. Uh, it's very possible that he was just running his car on lower power for qualifying, knowing that he could turn it way up in eliminations and try to win the race that way. So when you look at the car, it's easy to be like, okay, we can't, we can't sleep on this guy. We're gonna have to cut a light. We're gonna have to run a number to make sure that we can get through the next round. We got a uh, crowd favorite coming up in the right lane, Jared Holt, Ooh. real street performance built Supra. Do they allow wheelie bars on the street in California? Uh, no. Oh. Zero, zero. That's also best eighth mile. We went 491. 60 foot could help a little bit, but hey, whatever Jay did to it, it didn't wheelie. So I didn't have to really drive it too much that time. It was just like an autopilot. <laughs> and at that point, we knew next round he's going to have to race the number one qualifier. And Jared's a lot like me. So when he sees that that car's a lot quicker at the time, we're just both telling Jay to please just throw everything you have at it because that's what you naturally want to do. But um, Jay's very good about just adding enough power to make sure the car can be reliable. I mean, the car I think was only at 45 pounds. I mean, it, it has a lot left in it, but again, we're trying to go, we're trying to go rounds. We want to have a, a, an engine program that's going to live a long time. So it was important um, to put just enough that the car would run a, a number, but maybe not try to tear something up in the process of trying to beat this guy that's already three tenths faster than you. <laughs> It's very hard for me to cheer against my boy Jared Holt in the left lane. He's got a Supra, which is what started TX2K, although the Texas Speed and Performance 240 in the right's an awesome car too. Who do y'all think's gonna take it, the Supra or the 240? 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240. 240
Supra. Don't hate on my boy, Jared. Well, I'm, I'm changing my vote. Jared Holt the Supra. Right lane takes it with a 727. Left lane goes 752. I think that is the quickest Jared's been in that car. So coming back from that race, I mean, obviously he, he is a racer, so he was, you know, he still had some hope that something would happen. Maybe he would cut a light, the guy would sleep. It didn't. The guy, they both cut good, good lights. And even though Jared ran a new personal best, which he was extremely excited about, he did lose. So, uh, you know, I could tell that there was some disappointment, but at the end of the day, he was extremely happy because he knew his car went a lot of rounds. He got taken out by the number one qualifier. He went a new personal best in the process of 752 at 181. He's got a car that was healthy and ready to continue racing uh, back home. So I think overall he was happy. Um, he got a lot of seat time behind the car and it's just ready for the rest of the year. New personal best? New car best too. Yes, sir. Never been that fast before. It felt great. Man. Jay put the perfect tune up. Man, it went 89. Yeah, it went an 89 and it just... Good job, brother. It's so fun driving that car. But we weren't done. I still had to race uh, Cody Phillips in the finals. Cody went a new best the pass right before of 727. His weekend of lights were good, and the round before that, he had just gone, you know, perfect reaction time. somebody win on a whole shot with a perfect light. So Cody wasn't going to give anything to Gio. We know Cody. Cody is the type of person that he's going to turn his stuff up all the way to try to get a win, and I like that about him. He's gone 198, so he has the power. I had a lot of confidence in the car because I know that the car is faster, but they're close enough that you still have to chop that tree down because I, I, don't want, I didn't want Cody to beat me the same way that that I just beat Gary. Cody Phillips with Cody Phillips racing in the left. Gio Castillo with real street performance in the right lane. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the finals of TX2K19 to Jay-Z class. I felt them, I, I, I kind of saw him there and then I didn't see him again. Cody's in, Gio's in. Oh man, big advantage for Gio. 692, baby. 200 miles an hour. Apparently, Cody's inner core broke. So he had uh, water on the ground under the tires. Car slid a little bit. I don't know if Gio was aware or not that he had broke. Um, but Gio just, you know, again, Gio was racing his own race. I won a 92 at 200. Uh, which was the first 200 mile per hour time slip that I've gotten. So I was extremely excited about that. It had already gone 199.69, which to me was 200, but the internet will quickly remind you that it doesn't say 200. So I got my 200 time slip. It was on the board. That was very exciting. I'm really impressed with the reliability of the car, uh, how consistent it is. Uh, and you've got a trailer hitch on it. So tell us a little bit about what it felt like to go uh, 911 and what it felt like to go 200. Well, to do it at an event like this is extremely important because it's mostly a street car event, and that's my thing to me. If the car's not streetable, I'm just, it's cool, but it's just not my thing. So I wanted to make sure that the car always stays that way. That's why we did Drag Week, and I want to make sure that I could always go Drag Week for as long as I can. So to go to Drag Week, you have to be able to have a cooling system. You have to be able to have a car that's, technically I could have gone in the street car class, but I wanted to race the fast cars. I wanted to go to 2JZ class and, fa and race the people that I have you know, looked up to for a long time. I've been on Super Forums since like 2003, way before I could afford a Supra. And these guys that I race today are names that I've known for well over 15, 20 years or whatever. So uh, it's 
incredible to be able to go against Gary White, Dana, all those guys, and, you know, I got to win. So. You sure did. So tell us a little bit about the car, real street performance car. You guys have obviously been involved in my event for a very long time, which I appreciate and love. Um, but tell us a little about the car. How much power does it make? I think that's the first question everyone's asked me. I'm like, I don't know a lot. Yeah. So we've never actually dyno the car. I couldn't give you a real number. Um, it weighs 3,100 pounds with me in it, and it trapped 200 mile per hour. I would say maybe 18, 1,900 horsepower, something like that. Um, it's got a Mazworks uh, billet wet block. That was a big change for us this year. It was actually the first time that we ran uh, that motor. So uh, now that motor will allow me to have the reliability I need all year to run and push to go even faster, you know, and compete against the cars that are race cars, but with a car that's completely streetable. Well, you should be very proud. I'm proud of you and thankful for your support. Big round of applause for Gio Castillo, Real Street Performance, 2JZ class champion, TX2K19. Well done, buddy. Jay says, why don't we drive the car to dinner? I'm like, of course, I, I'm never gonna turn that down. We put the headlight back in because we had the carbon air inlet in it, so they got the car ready for me. And at that point, Kyle got his Corvette um, which he had ran a 9.0 in his uh, unicorn vet, and we drove both cars to the highway through the highway to Buffalo Wild Wings, where everyone was hanging out. So I want to thank uh, Peter Block and Jason Miller for the event this year. Uh, TX2K is a neat event. I'm happy to be able to be a part of it and go see um, the guys in the community, the super community, and spend some time with them. And then you know other racers throughout the community. It's neat to kind of put a face to the people that we email back and forth or see each other on social media. And I also appreciate your time watching this and kind of going through this uh, adventure with us. Thanks. I want to thank Peter Block for putting on this event. It's absolutely incredible what the event has transformed to. Uh, I forgot how long he said he's been putting it on, but it, I think it's close to 20 years at this point. So uh, it, it's incredible to see it become something that was just a super meet. And now it's a, it's a meet where people from all over the world travel to. And if you know, if you have the opportunity, no matter where you are in the world, I encourage you to go to this event. It is well worth it. It is four or five days long, and it is a very, very good time. Uh, thank you, Jason Miller, for always providing a surface that we can count on. You coming on to this event just took it to a different level. Um, so I look forward to coming to TX2K every single year. Now they're gonna have it twice a year, and, and that just makes it even better. Thank you.